In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at how you find an equation that relates two variables. I'm going to call them x and y here, but uh, you could use it for something that's not called x and y. And in this particular tutorial, we're going to take a look at linear functions. Uh, you have to start finding the differences to determine if it's a linear function or another polynomial of a higher degree. And um, so this tutorial involves linear functions. I'm going to make a second one on uh, quadratic functions and another one cubic as well and the procedure really is the same past that also. So the first thing that you would do is take your table of values and make sure that the x coordinates or whatever this variable is in the left hand column uh, the independent variable uh, that they're in ascending order they go up uh, so negative uh, 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 so it's going up from the top number to the one at the bottom of the table and so once you make sure those are in order, and if they're in a different order, you could just change them. It is possible to do this if they're in a descending order, uh, but the procedure would just change a little bit. So the first thing you do is find the differences now that they're in order uh, between the successive y values. To go from 14 to 11 is going down 3. So make sure you put a negative there if it's actually going down. The actual calculation in your calculator, we would uh, type in the 11, and we would subtract from that the 14 above it. And so that gives you negative 3. The next one is uh, it's 8, so we would go 8 minus 11. And again, that's negative 3. So these different, this next difference would be a negative 3. And we notice from 8 down to 5, 5 down to 2, they're all going down 3. So all the first differences are negative 3. Now, once you have uh, a row or, or column of differences that are all the same, you stop. You don't have to keep on finding differences past that. And if the first differences are the same, that's why this is a linear function. If it's the second differences that are the same, then it's called a quadratic function. And take a look at my quadratic function video for, for that one. Now, after you do that with your table of values, you take, and I'll call this the generic table of values for linear functions. So I'm going to call my linear function y equals mx plus b. And basically what we're trying to find here is what is the value of m and what is the value of b. Uh, if you studied y equals mx plus b before, those numbers are actually the slope and the y-intercept. Uh, but they're also just constants. Uh, the m is the coefficient of uh, the x variable and the b is the constant in the end. And so if I substitute negative 2, and it's a good idea to, to use the same x values here as you had in your table. That way things in the tables match up a lot better. So if I put negative 2 in place of x, negative 2 times m is negative 2m. And then we have the plus b on the end. If we put negative 1 in place of x, negative 1 times m would be a negative 1m or negative m, and then plus b. If we put 0 in place of x, 0 times m is 0, plus b is just b. Uh, if we put 1, 1 times m is m, and then plus the b. 2 makes 2m plus b. 3 gives you 3m plus b, and 4 gives you 4m plus b. Now what we want to do is find the, uh, the first differences between the successive y values, just like we did over, did over here with the numbers. And so to get this first difference, I would take this y value and subtract that one from it. So it looks like this. Here's the negative m plus b. I want to subtract from it the negative 2m plus b. Remember, remember when you move, remove the brackets here, uh, this negative is really a negative 1 here. It distributes into the second set of brackets. So negative 1 times two, negative 2m is a plus 2m. And the negative 1 times b gives you a minus b after that. Now, notice that these b's are opposites, plus b and minus b. So they add to 0. And then negative m plus the 2m just gives you m. So this first difference is m here. Next, I would take the next y value and subtract the one above it. So we would take uh, b and subtract negative m plus b. Uh, again, this negative 1 distributes into the bracket, so we end up with this b and then plus m minus b. Again, the b's are opposite, so they add to 0, and so we just get m. So the next difference is m. The next difference is also m. So it's really like to go from 0m to 1m is going up an m. Uh, the difference between successive b's, of course, is 0. That's why there's no b's over here at all. To go from m to 2m goes up an m. 2m to 3m goes an up an m, up an m. And 3m up to 4m goes up another m. So notice that all the first differences are m's. And so that actually in the table is the slope value. 
it's also the coefficient of x. And so if I want to know what m is, well notice that these are all m's and these are all negative 3's, so it's not too big a leap to figure out that m would be equal to negative 3. And so it really doesn't matter which m you pick over here because they're all the same and so are the first differences all over here. So m would be negative 3. Now, uh, how you find b, you could take any of these and set them equal to their uh, counterpart over here. So if I wanted to write negative 2m plus b equals 14, or negative m plus b equals 11, and solve for b, because I know m, I could. But the simplest place to find b is to, is to realize that b is the y-intercept. It's the y-value when x is 0. So if we look over here, the y-value when x is 0 would be 8. So that b must equal that 8. So b equals 8. And of course, if you actually use like m plus b equals 5 and put negative 3 in place of m, you would find that b is 8. So, substituting negative 3 in for m, uh, the equation becomes y equals negative 3x and then plus 8. So that's the equation that relates x and y. y would equal negative 3x plus 8. This is a linear function with a slope of negative 3 and a y-intercept of 8. And that's the end of the tutorial.